Side into the end zone. Oh, Fitz caught it. Touchdown, Cardinals. An absolutely perfect throw with two Colts all over Fitz. Fitz caught it. It breaks a tackle. He got it. One-handed catch by Fitz. It's caught. Fitzgerald lead. Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald money. Going deep. Fitz is there. He caught it. Hook down. I still feel like I have a lot of good football left in it. So clutch. Our next guest is in his 12th season with the Cardinals and holds the franchise record for receptions, receiving yards, and touchdowns. Please welcome eight-time Pro Bowler Larry Fitzgerald, who is here on behalf of Visa Checkout. Larry, thank you so much for being with us. Hey, Molly, how are you today? Excellent. All right, let, let's get into it. You tweeted this after Sunday's win against the Browns. Sloppy first half, but we showed resolve in the second. Nice to go into the bye week six and two. Now we'll rest up and get ready for the stretch run. So, Larry, how far can you guys go in that stretch run? You know, hopefully we could take it all the way to the top. You know, love to get to San Francisco, but, you know, there's a lot of work to be done uh, prior to that. You know, starting next weekend on uh, Sunday Night Football versus Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. It's going to be a tough challenge for us, but we're up for the challenge. Larry, I'm wondering what this year is like for you personally. Over the last three years, you didn't have a 1,000-yard uh, season when you had at least a 1,000-yard season the previous five. And already, after 784 yards received last year, halfway mark, you're already at 706. You seem to be having, you know, some sort of a resurrection. What's been going on, and how good are you feeling about how you've performed this season? Well, Stephen, it's always great uh, to be able to have some personal success, but, you know, at this point in my career, it's all about the team's success, to be honest with you. I mean, the personal accolades have done it, you know, but, you know, to be able to have a team that has the opportunity to compete for something that's truly special is what it's all about. Having Carson Palmer back healthy, having Chris Johnson balling out, um, having John Brown and Michael, Michael Floyd doing their thing with me, I mean, it's, it, it makes it that much more fun. Larry? I got a question I've always wanted to ask you about the way you carry yourself. I think it's fair to say that you are less of a diva than many of the players that play your position in the National Football League, many of the other star receivers. Why is that? Give us some insight into that. Skip, I'm just as much as a diva as those other guys. I just mask it a little bit better. I want my touches just like everybody else does, but I never put myself in front of my teammates. Um, I think it's important that as a leader you always show, um, you know, that, you, that you're willing to watch other guys have success. So when, when Smoke and John Brown and Chris Johnson long, makes long runs and other guys have success, I mean, that, those are my boys. I see them working every single day to have that success, and, and I really am happy for them. Um, you know, but I still want to get my opportunities too, though. And, and I, I realize you have an ego like everybody else, but do you think, Larry, it had something to do with the way you were raised? Skip, honestly, man, my parents did a wonderful job, my dad and my mother. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm truly a product of great parenting. Um, you know, they made a lot of sacrifices for myself and my brother to go to good schools, and um, I, they always provided great mentorship for me. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely would tip my hat to my parents, Skip. I appreciate you acknowledging them. You got it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we can't help but acknowledge your dad, how wonderful he's been to all of us in this business. But let me get back to you, uh, you know, just looking at, I remember... And I'll share this with Skip and Molly. The last time that I saw you in person play, I was at a game at MetLife Stadium, December 2nd, 2012. And the reason why I bring that up, Larry Fitzgerald, is because it is the most horrific experience that I've ever <laughs> had as a reporter covering a football game. The quarterback was Ryan Lindley. No disrespect, but he is somebody that I felt should have been banned from ever quarterbacking again. He went like 10 for 31 for like 72 yards. I counted at least five times when you were open, and they couldn't find you. And it was just so bad that I thought that you might contemplate retiring at the end of that season. I want to know <laughs> what has inspired you to continue going, to get to this point where you're able to have the kind of season that you're having. Because considering Arizona's struggles with finding a quarterback, uh, you know, with the exception of Carson Palmer, of course, because now he's healthy. I was, I'm wondering, what, what, what did it take for you to get to this point where you've stuck around this long? Because, damn it, I wanted to quit for you after that experience. <laughs> 
Hey, Stevie, you said I wanted to retire after the season. I wanted to retire after that game. No, honestly, uh, you know, when uh, you know when, when you have a quarterback that is uh, as talented as Carson, uh, you know he means as much to us as Tom Brady means to the New England Patriots, as much as Cam Newton means to the Carolina Panthers, as much as Aaron Rodgers means to the Green Bay Packers. That's what Carson Palmer means to us. And as far as Carson takes us, as far as we're gonna go, we understand that. Um, we know that we have to keep him healthy and protect him and, and make our plays for him. And he's gonna he's gonna have makes everybody successful because he's just that talented and uh, we understand that uh, we know that we have to play good football down the stretch but in terms of my mentality you know you never can have that defeatist mentality no matter if it's good bad, or indifferent you understand that you have an ability you have to believe in your ability on the good days and the bad days that's what confidence is all about so so why in your eyes as his favorite receiver is Carson Palmer so good I explain to us give us insight into what makes him as good as you believe he is well, Skip, most guys, when they get injured after the season, they go on IR, you don't really see them too much. They go rehab in San Diego or Dallas or Miami or whatever they go rehab. Carson Palmer rehabbed in Arizona at our facility every single day. So when we were going through our game plan, Carson was there. When we were watching tape, Carson was there. He was involved in every single day-to-day -day operation. Only thing he did not do was go out into the practice field. But from a mental standpoint, he was with us. And I think that really helped uh, you know, him in terms of really understanding what Coach Aarons was expecting of him. And it really just made everybody just love him that much more because he didn't have to be there. Um, mm -hmm. He didn't have to be watching tape and doing the things he was doing, but he was dedicated to us uh, and wanted the best for us, um, even though he couldn't be on the field with us. So when we got back together in the offseason, um, you know, everybody was on the same page. Larry, I want to transition real quick to a defense that's ranked fifth against the pass. It's a top ten defense. We've heard the names, Calais Campbell, Patrick Peterson and the crew, Powers and others. But I got to give some love to Tyran Matthew, the Honey Badger, because I got to tell you, he's second on the team in tackles. We all know about his checkered pass at LSU. This seems to have been like a, I don't know what to call it, but boy, does this kid deserve a lot of credit. He's always around the football. We knew that coming out of LSU. He can really play the game, but it seems to me like he's really grown up to piggyback off a of skip on the field as well as off the field. I want you to talk about him for a quick second and talk about the impact yourself, uh, Bruce Arians, the whole Cardinals organization has had because I think this kid is really special and we need to take a moment to give him some love. Well, Stephen, I, I think a lot of times this happens is when people evaluate guys, they say, oh, he did this, he made a mistake. Um, how, how many people do you know that have never made a mistake before? Uh, I, there's nobody out there. Tyron's one of the most special individuals you ever be around. His dedication and attitude is infectious among our locker room. He's a young guy, but he is definitely one of our true leaders in our team. We love his passion. We love his energy. We love his charisma. Everything he brings to this ball club, um, you know, he leaves it out on the field every single day. And, um, you know, having him be a part of our team only makes us that more special because he's so dynamic he can play corner he can play nickel he can play safety he's one of our best blitzers one of our best open field tacklers he's so talented and what he can do for our ball club um, and everybody recognizes that in his and his ability and and we're going we're going to go far because of his ability mm. it's good to see him doing it not just in college but at the nfl as well larry thank yes, you so much for the time on your bye week congrats Thanks, on your larry. personal success the team's success and good luck down Thanks. the stretch you know we'll be watching thank you very much you guys have a great day all right, up next, Johnny Manziel will start tonight when the Browns face the undefeated Bengals in Cincinnati. We'll tell you what we expect from Johnny. That's next. Ryan Clark will join that conversation. Stay here.